Today on the Hero Nation Show, we're gonna be talking about success. Do you suck at success or are you too good at success for your own good? Are you super successful and you built a success that maybe you hate? Because you suck. Today on the Hero Nation Show. Boom. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Hero Nation Show, the place where business owners and entrepreneurs just like you come to learn tools and tactics to live more epic lives. I'm your host, John Reinhardt, and today I'm joined by my partner in crime, Wayne Salmons, and we are here to talk about a subject that you are insanely passionate about. Yes. Building a life you actually love at the end of the day, not building a success you hate. So when we were talking about that, what does that mean for you? Like what comes to mind as we talk about So that? I think that there are two things that come to my mind right off the bat. The first one is um, people, so kind of taking a different angle from you, um, but kind of going like people who, let's, all right, let's, 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 let's bring out the real, the real guns. So let's say um, hypothetically, hypothetically, there was, there was like a, a you know, um, a person who went out to Hollywood, they decided they were going to be a great actor, a great orator. And and then they, the next thing that they know, they're kind of tired of like starving, doing bartending jobs, um, you know, working like one little commercial gig to another. And they decide to become a real estate agent. We're not talking about you. We might be talking about you. But we're not. But we might be. Just in case. But it could. <laughs> Don't sue us. Probably. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. They go out to like chase their dream. They get their real estate license. Then they look up 10 years later. And they're super successful. But they're not success. They're not being successful in the thing that they're passionate about. And then the other side of that is is like you got your dream. You got your amazing thing that you're doing. It's awesome. And you love it. And then you wake up like five, 10 years down the line. And you realize you hate it. So I think that there's, in my perception, I think there's three, there's kind of three levels here. Level one is people that have a job that they don't love, right? They, they, they settle for a job. They don't like the job. They're not very good at the job. They kind of hate their life, right? They're, and a lot of the population lives in that, right? They're always waiting for the weekend because they hate the, right? They hate their Monday through Friday. Um, then you have the second tier of people. And those are people that they found something that they're actually pretty good at, right? Like they, they, they get into real estate, they get into whatever, and they find something they're actually pretty good at. And yet, uh, there's a third place. And the third place is the people that have gone from like, like not so great to good to greatness. Yeah. And they're actually doing like what their soul is compelling to do. Like they're doing stuff that lights them up. Right. right, like there's stuff that like they know they're called to be, and I think about 80 to 90 percent of the population, probably even more than that, is in those first two tiers, right? And, and then very few people are in that third tier. So, I mean, my my here's my thought um, on this. I think. I think I think there's a couple of things. I, I don't think anyone just finds greatness and I don't think anybody just finds success. You know, I think that there's a lot of I think there's a lot of preparation um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of failure. And I, I don't think that. Gosh, I don't think the, I don't think the greatness and I don't think success is a straight line. I think it's a crooked path. I, I up think it's a damn path. mountain. Yeah, no, I agree. With you. And I think a lot of people don't know they don't necessarily it's not like they're necessarily saying no to their greatness a lot of people don't really know what it is or what does what does it actually look like but they they feel something right mm -hmm. so so I've, i feel that call me sometimes they go i don't know why i'm not happy i should be happier I've called to I've, something I've more built success i built this life but there's something missing and i need to figure that out right? right so they know in their their soul and their gut whatever you want to call it that there's this another level for them to get to and i think it takes some work to get there I think there's a myth, there's a there's a myth that you'll be walking down the street one day on a Tuesday afternoon and you'll get hit with a lightning bolt of what success of, of like hey what you're called to do and then your life changes. I think that happens with some people, right? It's very rare. Most people have to go through the journey like you and I went through, which is like you take that crappy job because that's what you have to do to pay the bills, and then you nail Work that job. And you you begin to find things along the way. You start doing the soul searching. You, you journal things. You pay attention to what lights me up. What you. It's a journey. Well, and I, and I think and I, and I think that a lot of times we, at least in the in the beginning, right? Like you despise like certain things. Like I I, I you know I started in, um, you know when I came back from Australia, uh, my my job was started in a call center, right? Um, doing tech and customer service. 
I, which is a really inspiring place you've always dreamed of being, even as a, a little hole. kid, right? As five yeah, years, it's, it's an absolute hellhole. Brutal. What I didn't realize at that moment was that um, it was laying the groundwork and giving me an, ex, an experience and a, a set of skills yes. that were insanely valuable. I didn't know that at the time. Um, I just thought, like, it just kind of felt like the dead end place, you know, where the, like a lot of people that were, you know, there and, you know, I was just kind of, I was just kind of doing it. Um, I didn't realize that later on it would be like the bedrock of, 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 of me being able to understand and, um, and, and work with like, uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, people that are doing cold call sales systems. I had no idea. Um, you know, I, you know, and I, I know you like, you know, uh, I love you. I love your little saying. You know, you're like you're not a real man until you've wiped another yeah. man's ass. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah. I, I mean, I remember I was going through college, and uh, I, I need I need to work, and I started helping with, um, you know, you know, you know, adults that had severe mental disabilities, and and you know, I mean, I'm working with you know, 180 pound men changing their diapers and giving them baths and enemas, I, right? And at that moment, it's like this is probably not my life's calling, right? And yet, I learned so much in that moment. It's kind of I think what Steve Jobs said, right? Like. It's hard to connect the dots looking forward. It's easy to connect them looking back. But I think a principle you and I have, one of the big myths I think out there is people they go, this isn't what I'm called to do. And then just want to jump ship and go and go do whatever. And I think that one of the principles that you and I live by is be faithful where you are on the journey, right? So be faithful where you are. Like you said years ago, you, you had a job that you didn't love. And yet in the evening, you were researching leadership. You're researching how do I create great films, all this other stuff. So you were faithful where you are doing the work to get you to where you thought you wanted to go. Yeah. And I think it's a process. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole thing. And, you know, I, I, I kind of like, I had two points where I kind of did that. Like when I first, we, Heidi and I first started our business uh, in California, um, we didn't know what we were doing. Like, you know, I, I, didn't, I, I had a dream, right? Um, but in the meantime, I had to pay the bills. So I was actually, I was working with quadriplegics, mental disabilities, and I was doing like these 72 hours like in-house um, shifts and stuff like that. Um, and in just every moment, because I, I didn't learn film from somebody, um, I learned music, mm -hmm. you know, so film was a whole different thing. I, what happened was I hit YouTube yeah. and I learned everything that I could. Um, I didn't even know, I, here's something funny. I didn't own a camera at the time. I, I bought my camera on the way to my first job. Did I ever tell you that? No, that's crazy. The, I, I, so Heidi well, and I, Heidi and I got a camera. We, I had saved up all this money and, uh, to buy my first yeah. like Canon camera. And on the way yeah. to where someone had hired us, I ran into Best Buy and bought the camera on the way there, that's stuck a battery amazing. in. And that was how we started that's off. That's amazing. Well, and here, so. here's what I think is, is so cool about that is <laughs> You didn't resent, and both of you, both you and I, and all, and all the jobs we had, we didn't resent where we were. We we knew, maybe you knew that, hey, this isn't my forever place, yeah. and maybe you resented a little bit while you were there. But we worked. <laughs> I'm we, like, let's be honest. Yes, yeah. I, I'm pretty yeah. sure there was some there was some complaining. But you worked so. <laughs> to. I, I think the difference is you appreciated what you could learn here. Sometimes I'll have people call me. They go, man, I hate the real estate team I'm on, or whatever it is, and, and I'm like, you know, pump the brakes for a yeah. second. There's probably some amazing lessons for you to learn where you are, right? Because someday you're going to be a leader and you're going to learn right now what you want to do and things you don't want to do. Yeah. You have an amazing opportunity where you are. Well, and, I think that's the thing. What's in your hand today? Right. That was one of the biggest lessons that I learned. So start with start where with, you are with what you have. With what's, what's in your hand. So I was, I was living in, so we were living in California. I got, uh, we started our business. It was successful for a little while and then we drowned it. Um, <laughs> it was our fault. Um, we ended up losing everything, ended up moving back to Texas. We ended up moving in with my mom and my dad. Welcome to like, we're going to bring the whole family together. Um, you and your wife have lost everything, lost the car, lost the house. You know, welcome to moving back in mom and dad. Um, I'm trying to restart a business. Um, and I'm working construction for my father. And he's like, just do it. What's in your hand? What do you have in your hand right now? And I was like, you know what? I, I have a lot of time. I have, I'm doing construction, but I have a lot of time. And so I was, I was putting in my headset and I was listening to podcasts. Um, I was listening to podcasts, uh, actually about like different companies. Yeah. Um, HBO, it was like the histories of different companies, HBO and Netflix and, um, or, or AT&T or, um, 
you know, I, I, I was just, I was, I was fascinated by learning these histories. Um, and it allowed me to absorb so much. Yeah. Well, and like you said, um, you used what you had. So at that yeah. moment, you, you, you had some time. So you use that time wisely. And I think so many people, they're not using their time wisely and they're, they have Prince Charming syndrome. They're waiting for someone to show up on a white horse, see how special they are, and then carry them off to this awesome opportunity. And, and what you realize is use what you have in your time, right? Like Zig, uh, who was it? Zig Ziglar, or Jim Rohn, you just talk about, you know, automobile university, right? Like you've got time in the car. Are you using that time to grow? Are you, you know, nail your nine to five and, and then you got hours in the rest of the day. What are you doing there? So I think there's this, there's this misbelief that, Hey, once I realize I'm not doing my calling, I should just jump. And we're saying that you probably got to be faithful where you are, figure out what your calling is and then start taking those steps. And, and all on top of that, you know, I think if, if you're watching this, you want to go deeper on that. I think one of the things you got to realize is doing it on your own works. Yet, if you want to collapse time and speed up that process, just like I did a couple years ago with you, right? You, I, I talked with you to help me figure out exactly what I wanted to do. If you want to collapse time, you probably need to reach out to, to John and say, hey, let's spend an hour on the phone. Help me figure out where, where I'm going at a higher level. It's, you can do it much faster if you're doing it with somebody else. And so let's transition just a little bit. At some point, you're going to have to jump. At, at some point, the, right, the divide between, man, you're really good at real estate or you're really good at taxes or you're really good at whatever to like, hey, I'm supposed to be leading a team or I'm supposed to be growing a business or I'm supposed to go do philanthropy. Like whatever that thing is for me, it was going from like real estate to full-time coaching. Like there's going to be a gap and at some point you're going to have to jump because the bridge never touches. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. it, it, re it requires you to step out. It requires you to step out. You know, it, it, it just it just does and it's... It's, it's that it's that iconic scene from Indiana Jones where he's like, you know, have that step of faith, um, step onto the bridge or whatever. Yep. And, you know, he steps out and he hits the bridge and you're, and, and you're like, oh, my God, there actually is something here. Um, sometimes there isn't anything there. But, <laughs> you know. But do you want to live your life? I, I think what we do you have a life of regret. Do you want to have a life where, where so many people go, they, they, you hear them say things and I've had people come to me like this. They're, they're at the later phase of their life and they go, how did I get here? How, how did I let myself get to 75, 85 years old without pursuing some of the stuff that I knew was in my heart and in my soul? Like, how did I let that happen? And I think a lot of times they let that happen by we, we don't listen to the shoulder taps, right? As, as Bill Hart says, we don't listen to that little voice or we don't spend enough time in reflection and quietness. And one of the things we realize about successful people is they spend time in reflection. Most people, average people, spend more time planning their Christmas party than they do figuring out who they really are in the life that they really want to have. Yeah, and I, I, think it, I, can, I think it kind of actually comes from developing a, a culture of being of, of self-reflection and mm -hmm. being quiet. So one of the things that I, um, so my wife's Finnish, um, and, uh, the first time I went to Finland, um, it was a little bit of a shock to my system. Uh, the Finland is known for being a very introverted country, mm -hmm. um, very quiet. Um, and we, there was just like this, like a summer cottage out by this lake. Like the idea of a good day was we talk, we eat, we go to the sauna and we go out in the lake and then we repeat. And that was such a, uh, a shock because they were like, we're here to live a life worth living. Mm -hmm. And it I, I I hadn't seen it before. I heard people talk about life worth living, but a life worth living was always something like off in the distance. Yeah, it's, all, it it's always, always something you're working to attain. And we see people do it all the, the work, 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 work. Like, where are you trying to get to? Right, and this was this was totally different. This was like, no, 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 we're here, right now, and we live from this place. And there was a lot of time for self reflection. I move. I I I. I I was I was burnt out at the time. I was uh, um, um, I was I, I, I needed some time for some super self reflection, and I remember I just I went from <laughs> I went from like a two hundred degree Celsius sauna um, to uh, no it wasn't two hundred degrees Celsius that would be be one hundred hundred degrees Celsius. It was hot. Sorry. So I, 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 I would go from like this 100 degrees Celsius sauna um, or 200 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 
you know, and I would sit in there and then I go jump in this like, yeah. you know, like uh, 36, 40 degree water and I would just go back and forth. Mm. But my thing was, it was so quiet. I could think uh -huh. I walked away with it with so much clarity. I had actually built a business um, at the time. Uh, we were doing real estate videos. Um, we were, uh, we had done like over 4,000 real estate um, uh, housing videos, right? That is a incredible amount of videos. It's it's a lot, and uh, so this would be like house tours and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it was always kind of like a side gig that we were doing, and I I, I, um, I didn't enjoy it. Right. I hated it. Um, I realized I was completely burnt out. Um, my guys didn't like it either. They right. were burning out too, because um, we had these like twenty four hour, right. thirty six hour turnaround times. And it took me going back and forth and having, I, well, I think we almost had like uh, like three weeks of just time going quiet. I mean, quiet. No one's talking. Like no one's no one's saying anything. And if they're saying anything to me, it's in Finnish. I can't understand yeah. it anyway. It doesn't even help. Um, but it, it took me that 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 time to be able to walk back and go, Hey guys, guess what? This isn't working. we're going we're going in a completely <laughs> yeah. different direction. Yeah. Um, we're going to take care of the clients that we have. We're going to do what stuff well, but we're changing this business model. It, it actually, I, what I had found out was I was at the point at that, at that time, um, I was losing money. Yeah. I was successful, but I was losing money. Yeah. Well, and, and I dropped that and all of a sudden I started making yeah. money. Well, and, ah! and so like, many the people, <laughs> they're not, um, taking time. And I, I think that if you walk away with, with this call with, or from this podcast with one thing, it's find a time, especially high achievers, you need time to in isolation. You need time to think, um, right? There, there's, there's four, when I'm doing the big why class, um, there's 14 questions I get somebody. So if you really want to go deep on this, reach out to us and we'll give you those 14 questions. And, and, and you block off half an hour time to answer some real deep, hardcore questions. And I guarantee it'll, it'll bring in a lot of awareness to your life. And one of the things you're talking about is like, what, what are these, some of these frustrations that instead of just medicating and working harder or, or just pushing through, I need to actually take a step back and go, what's working, what's not working? What regrets am I going to have at the end of my life if, if I'm doing this? You see so many people that eventually they get successful, but they lost their family, their friends, their health along the way, and that's pointless. So I think you've got to make sure, right, the whole point of this is are you building a quote-unquote success that you're actually going to love? So, powerful. All right, last thoughts? Anything, you, actions you would take based on this? Get some quiet time. Um, talk with some people. Um, I know those sound like contradictory ideas, but I want you to get some quiet time. I want you to talk with some people that you trust. Um, think about this stuff. We all, and, and understand this, we all most of the time get to these points, especially especially as high achievers and, 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 and when we're building into transition, um, we, we, we're moving from a caterpillar to a butterfly. There is time for the cocoon. Right. Well, it, no, so true. And, and someone said that we get so busy and just being busy that we lose touch with other people, right? Which we've yeah. happened, but we also lose touch with ourselves. We're so busy. We lose touch with, with, with other people that's important, but we also lose touch with who we really are. And, and you just get stuck. And I remember one, one guy said, he goes, how different is this year than last year? And when he asked me that question, this is years ago. And I, I went, holy crap, this is the same year as last year. And, yeah. and I realized that once he asked, I wasn't okay with that. Yeah. Right. And um, so as, you know, reach out to us, get those 14 questions, answer those questions or, you know, get on the phone with some, someone like John um, and let him, let him, you know, help you self discover that. I mean, that's that's the stuff we talk about in fuel and, and in our one on one coaching all the time is are you building this with the end in mind or are you just working for the sake of working? Yeah. All right, guys, uh, drop your comments below. Let us know what you think. Guys, go to the hero nation dot com. Um, join some of us, get involved in fuel or coaching or something that will change your life so that it'll be different next week than it is this week. Okay. Till next time, guys, be your own hero. Boom. <laughs>